May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to relate this morning's Gospel passage on the subject of ministering to the present and future needs of the Church in Wales, and our needs to do things differently in the future to bring about the Kingdom of God in this place. Our Gospel passage describes how Jesus sent out his followers in pairs to carry out his work in the wider world. Either 70 or 72 people, depending on your translation, are sent out, which must have represented a very large percentage of the core group of Jesus' followers at the time. Very few were not involved in some way or other. Even the sick would have been praying for those involved in going out on this venture. In Jesus' ministry, then, all are called, and all have a role to play in their shared ministry with Jesus. As far as Jesus is concerned, there is no concept of 11 players on the pitch and 30,000 just watching from the stands. Everyone is called to do something, depending on their abilities. Equally, though, and this is important, no one is left to work on their own or out of their depth. The followers of Jesus in today's account work as pairs or as small teams, complementing one another's skills and making up for one another's weaknesses, which we all have. In many ways, this echoes Bishop June's recent comments on ministry areas, which she nicely summed up as, even Jesus worked as part of a team. Archbishop Barry, when introducing ministry areas eight long years ago, foretold that they would necessarily bring to an end the archaic practices of Lone Ranger priests often struggling on their own, whilst tens if not hundreds of lay people looked on. I know you've all heard that message from him in person. He said it at St Dochtwys on the 150th anniversary of the church and also at St Augustine's when we hosted a confirmation there. In other words, Archbishop Barry was calling for more teamwork and more lay ordained partnerships in doing things. In our parish we have been a ministry area for over a year now and the sky has not yet fallen in. Who would have thought it? Next year we have the opportunity to work with our partners at All Saints Spinath in a new and exciting form, sharing in ministry, supporting one another, developing teamwork and all in a new and vibrant way. Now, contrasting with the vibrant approach you'd expect a team leader to adopt when enthusing the members of the team, Jesus in today's account takes a rather unusual approach. You would think, wouldn't you, that he would excite, inspire, enthuse, encourage his colleagues and send them on their way with hearts ablaze. And that indeed may have been the case, but it's not recorded. What is recorded, and this may have been some time after they'd gone, what is recorded is Jesus saying, the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. If it had been to those people he just sent out or was about to send out, uh, send out it wouldn't be much of a motivational speech now, would it? It's a bit like saying, well, there's a heck of a lot of work out there, people, but hardly anyone around to do it. So because of that, I don't think Jesus said those things to the people who were going out. He may have said it, however, commenting in commentary form to the people who were left behind, saying just how much work there was to do out there. Well, the disciples go off and they return full of passion 
amazed at what they've been able to do, freed up in their new roles. They have surprised themselves. And they come back wanting to do even more and demonstrating to the people left behind, who had had lowered expectations courtesy of Jesus, that they could do it after all. Well, Moses was someone who was deeply uncertain of his abilities, wasn't he? He wanted to run away when given a challenge. He felt himself quite unable even to speak to a crowd, let alone lead a nation. But God supported him, and it worked out brilliantly, didn't it? And that was because Moses trusted in God. He trusted in God. And it worked out okay in the end. More than okay. Now talking about Moses, interestingly, uh, he persuaded 70 people, the same number as in today's account, uh, not a coincidence. He persuaded 70 people to go off and do God's work when he realised that he couldn't be in two places at once. And that the people were placing unrealistic expectations upon him. In Numbers chapter 11, Moses, a lone ranger, worker for God, if ever there was one, learns to include others. He starts to get others to work with him as part of a team, uh, and he trains them out of their ridiculous expectations that he and he alone would do everything for them, everything for them. And in many ways, this echoes the reason why ministry areas are, of course, being created. They are new ways of working, sharing the tasks of ministry, according to ability and according to training levels, etc., etc., but with less dumping of tasks onto the shoulders of a few ordained people or a few lay people, but sharing it out more widely. And this greater involvement of lay people, and a greater percentage of them becoming involved in things, is key for the future of the church in Wales. Working in teams is key for the well-being of parishes and, and for their own development. Greater lay leadership and participation is essential, not only because it's a good idea, and leads to spiritual and numerical growth, but because it will stem the flood of priests retiring on the grounds of ill health, for example. These expensively trained assets, to look at it in one frame of mind, should not be lost to the church if we can find ways of preventing it from happening. And this is especially relevant uh, where you consider that there are to be a massive number of priests retiring in the next few years. To take a local example, uh, Peter Cox's generation, for example, were born in the 1950s and on into the, in, on into the early 1960s, when, for example, church going on a Sunday was still the norm. But now that generation are retiring now and in the next few years. And because there were fewer churchgoers in the late uh, 1960s and in subsequent decades, there will, there will, there has to be, there will be fewer priests in the pipeline to lead the church of the future. And since there's a natural limit to how many churches can be served by one priest, people's practices on the ground don't change, and that's an important part of it. We're going to have to adapt in order to be able to survive. Because otherwise, the only alternative would be to have fewer churches served by that priest. In other words, we find a mechanism to serve our existing churches, or we close some of them so that it becomes manageable. And since no one, no one wants closes, uh, the closure of churches, 
the answer simply is to adopt new ways of working, involving lay people as much as possible. Adapt to survive. A simple message. And so we return to Moses and his discussion with God in the book that Christians call Numbers. God replies, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, and they shall bear the burden of the people along with you, so that you will not bear it all by yourself. It seems then that God, God, advocates greater teamwork as his model for ministry. Mission and ministry is therefore something that we all need to undertake jointly, together, as the body of Christ in this place. Not just as a means of adapting and surviving in the future, but because God wills it for the health and the development of his church. Amen. Thank you for listening. Look forward to uh, the next sermon and being with you uh, next week. Bye for now.